Please welcome back to the stage, Daniela Fair, Group Publisher of Defense for GovExec, along with Dominic Bonaducci, Senior Product Strategy Manager for Verizon. Hello, everybody. And yes, I am back uh, with Dominic this time. <laughs> Dominic, welcome. Bonaducci, to correct the record. But it's, <laughs> I get it all. You get it all. It's great. We're going to continue our conversation with our with industry. Um, I want to thank you for your support of the Defense One Tech Summit. And um, Dominic, you're the product strategy person at Verizon. So I thought what I would do is ask you to introduce yourself a little bit, a little bit about who you are and sort of what your role is at Verizon so we can understand your comments. Absolutely. So my name is Dominic Bonaducci. I'm a senior product manager for strategy, supporting our national security and defense products at Verizon. And effectively, what it is that I do is I look at the diverse ecosystem of capabilities coming out of Verizon, whether it's for Fed, SLED, enterprise, or consumer capabilities, and I identify those potential opportunities within the federal space. I spend a lot of time thinking about the various personas involved that uh, would be interested in these types of capabilities, from your end user to those who have your knowledge of requirements to people, you know, folks with budget authority. Um, and then I work to evangelize those capabilities across uh, the, the federal government at large, but more specifically national security institutions. Okay. So you should be able to answer this question for me. I would love it if you could explain to me, and perhaps the audience would appreciate this too, what a private 5G network is and how is it different from the 5G that I experience and many on devices in my phone? Well, the short answer is that it's not that different. The biggest difference is, you now if you take the commercial 5G network, that's the same Verizon that if, if you are a Verizon um, customer and you see Verizon on your phone, um, it's the same type of technology that is connecting our 150 million plus users on our network. Okay. You have a network core, and then you have your radio access network, all the antennas and macro sites and small cells you see uh, around the country. Now take that same infrastructure and shrink it down. So instead of looking to connect 150 million users, um, you're connecting uh, 5,000, 1,000, 100 of them in a much smaller area, specifically so that enterprises can offer the same quality of service and the same experience on those mobile user devices within their enterprise domains. And these are gonna be for things that are connecting machines and not, not just your cell phones, tablets, computers, but um, your autonomous vehicles and robots and electro-optical sensors, and you, you name it. Okay, so this is the Defense One Tech Summit, so we are hyper-focused on defense, DOD, national security. Can you uh, give us an example, like a specific example of how like a private network would resonate and be used in a military context? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when we think about private networks and, and 5G in general. Uh, the network itself is not the end-to-end -end solution. It's a component. It is an enabling factor to an end-to-end -end solution. And I love coming towards the end of a lot of these programs where you've heard about all these amazing things that different companies and technologies are doing within the DOD because there's a network story within that. Um, the best example I like to use is uh, uh, training in human performance studies. Um, a lot of times, the warfighter is training in these very large, austere environments. Think Fort Irwin, 29 Palms, these very large, vast desert, forest, um, uh, austere, RF-denied environments. But there's a lot of situational awareness and command and control that needs to uh, be had in any of those exercises. If you're just going out and training maneuvers, um, you, you might be on a device and you're utilizing TAC, um, but if there's no connectivity, you know, you're, you're limited to the bandwidth that, uh, that HF or UHF or VHF can provide you. With a private 5G network, you get the pipes, uh, the larger pipes, the lower latency, um, and the connected services that might be running at the edge. And we'll touch a little bit on that uh, later. But um, I love the example of training because you're able to utilize that low latency to get real-time analytics for your human performance or your exercise control uh, to take advantage of when studying the effectiveness of a certain maneuver or training regimen, but also providing that seamless communication between your dismounted expeditionary 
uh, or adversarial um, simulated components in a training environment. All right, so I'm going to the edge right away. Yeah, <laughs> How does uh, edge computing and AI fit into all of this? I mean, we've been talking all day about all these cool technologies, but everybody in, the, in every um, session, they've been talking about how does it work in, in theater at yeah. the edge? So, you know, when we think about private networks, there's a story to be told again. There's the, on the, at the tactical edge, what does 5G and private networks look like in the battlefield? And then what does it look like in the case of a military installation? Um, you know, when I think about edge computing, and I made that reference to it, the network is enabling of an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, if you have your, your network core, you have your radio access network, and you have your user devices, you know, they all got to reach back and touch something. And that is the role of where edge compute takes place, where you are leveraging on-prem compute capabilities. And this is where you're going to have your computer vision engines running, your large language models running. So again, those models and those tools can be used uh, and take advantage of that lower latency and that higher bandwidth and throughput to those end user devices. Now, what we see here is a very GOTS, you know, government off the shelf story, but frankly, it's the same technology that we're using in a lot of these enterprise uh, use cases. The example I like to give is, um, Verizon's working with the NFL, and you might have heard about it. It's in, been in the news. We have what's called coach comms. You go to any NFL stadium, and all of the coaches are connected via a private network where they are communicating with each other, coach to player, coach to coach, um, with push to talk capabilities with, with SIM enabled headsets. Now, they're also you know, sharing plays over a tablet or a phone. Now, I look at that and I see TAC on a user device. I don't see uh, a football player with a helmet on. I see a exercise control or range control uh, in a white cell operator uh, overseeing and adjudicating an exercise in a training environment. Um, again, there are dots to be connected and there's not, quite frankly, there is not one use case within consumer or enterprise that doesn't have a direct correlation or a benefit to the Department of Defense, whether you are a man and woman in, in uniform, a, a contractor, civilian counterpart, or their men and women, uh, or friends and family supporting them. Yeah, I mean, I think we see that across the spectrum of the you know, DOD is reaching out more and more to industry because you are already doing this in the commercial space. There is applications, um, you know, both directions. So um, we only have a couple of minutes left, so I wanna wrap this up. Um, talk to us a little bit about dual use technologies. What it, what is industry, what ways are, does industry support the direction of the DOD that they want to go in with respect to 5G networks? Well, you know, one of the exciting things about the fifth generation of connectivity is the number of connected devices that the network core can support. Um, so it's not just cell phones and tablets and computers. It's IoT devices. It's what's going to bring about the advent of smart buildings. And we've heard this before, but in practice, what this looks like is... Um, uh, 5G-connected surveillance cameras, 5G-connected ground sensors to monitor the uh, moisture in your grass, 5G-connected torque wrenches, and you think that's a joke, that is an actual thing. What the DOD can pay attention to and, and amplify is their need for more connected devices and look at the chip manufacturers and the hardware developers to adopt 5G modules into their hardware, into their solutions, that to, to make those... Uh, uh, those use cases be able to take advantage of that low latency. You know, you, you used to think about the killer app that was going to come out. It, it's not an app anymore. It's a killer use case from end to end. And industry has a role to play in educating the DoD because, again, the DoD has that large appetite. And again, there's not one use case that doesn't resonate within that space. <laughs> I want to uh, thank you for your indulgence on your name. We finally got it right. Thank you. Um, and I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for having me. Stage. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank you.